Let's talk about creating pivot tables. So in the next few slides, we're going to kind of go over exactly what they are and what they're used for. In the case of the exercise file that you have access to, we're going to go through and actually create the following pivot tables based upon the data that's in the array formula tab. First one is to find out exactly what the campus count is, which is the number of entries by campus name. Second is the number of entries by job role, then the number of entries by place of employment, and then last, the number of entries based upon the registration date. A pivot table is used to summarize data, define patterns, and reorganize information. Uh, for example, if you had a sheet that contained thousands and thousands of rows, instead of going through and trying to count each entry by hand, what you can do is go ahead and select that range and then choose the row, which is the thing that you're going to measure by, and the value, which is the thing that you're going to measure. So there is a plan of action um, that we use in order to create the pivot tables themselves. First is selecting the actual range, then choosing a place where the pivot table will live, and then adding the rows and values to that pivot table. So inside the exercise file on the array formula tab that you've recreated for yourself, I am going to go ahead and scroll to the right hand side and the pivot table will be placed here in O1. It's far enough away so that it will not overlap the information or data that's already here. The range that I want to use to go ahead and uh, gather the data to put into the pivot table will be on column A all the way through column M. Now to make that selection is to click up here where the header is and then drag either your mouse or on the tracking pad to highlight all of the columns. Uh, what you do not want to do is to try to do this by cl clicking inside the area that has the row and then selecting it like this. Instead, click up where the header is and try not to click too hard or else it changes to a move and then highlight. Once that's finished, you would click on insert and choose the option of pivot table. So a pop-up window will appear. It will show you the actual data range and will give you options to either create the pivot table on a new sheet or an existing one. I often put my pivot tables on one sheet to make it easier to find the information quickly. So I'm going to choose existing sheet, click here where you have select data range, move this to the side and then click in the actual sheet to select the cell. It will appear right here and then I can click OK and then click create. Once a pivot table is created, the pivot table editor will appear. And inside the editor, you're going to the row area to go ahead and add in what you want to have appear in the pivot table. In this case, I want to know about the campus name or the number of times a certain campus appears within the data range. So I'm going to click on campus name. I'm going to go down to where I have values and again, choose the campus name. So the pivot table will now display all of the campus names found throughout the range and the number of times those names appear. So just by looking at this data inside the pivot table, I can now see that I have two instances of Edison High School and maybe three of Woodlong Academy with a total of 28 different campuses. I do have a zero that's here. And the reason why that zero is visible because the last column that we have in the array formula, at least the selection that we've made, 
is column M. And you'll notice that column M does not have a number at the end. So the range is open until the bottom of the actual sheet. And that range also includes rows that have nothing in it where the value is zero. To remove that option for the row that has zero in it, we're going to use the filter, which is underneath values. We're going to click on add and again, choose campus name. And what we want to do is uncheck the option for blanks. Once those blanks are removed and we click OK, you'll now notice that the zero not disappears. But within that same area, please look and see that you do have the ability to choose what you want to see within the actual pivot table. So if I just wanted to isolate and kind of see exactly what school like, for example, Brackenridge or Carroll has data and nothing else. I would choose those two, click OK, and then you'll see that only those two schools will show up. If I want to change this back to how it was before, I click once again in the area for the filter where the status is and clear and then select all. Remembering again to go ahead and uncheck blanks. And then the information appears once again. To make another pivot table, you can go through and select the range again. But a shortcut that I have is to click right where the O1 happens to be, which is the cell that you pasted or chose to put the pivot table in. You copy the content inside of that cell. You go a little bit further to the right and then paste again. And the pivot table and the pivot table editor will then reappear. So if I wanted to change this so that I'm looking at something else instead of the campus name, I click on the X to remove the options. And then I go to the process of selecting what I want to see. So in this case, it would be the job role. Go to the values, choose job role again to get the values to come in. Once again, I have a blank or a zero. So add inside the filter, job role, and choose the option to take the status to uncheck blanks and then click OK. So what I will do is add two more in quickly. Last one that I'm going to place in will be related to the date, so that way I can measure the registration over a period of time. So I go in and choose the option of date, and then add the values for date. And the filter is a little bit different. So you'll notice that I have an error done at the very bottom, a value error. So just like the zeros that you see from the rows that have nothing in it, this also has an error because there's no data in it either. So I will check off uh, the value option and click OK. And we can now see that we had certain entries done during certain dates. This will end up being the graph that's located at the very top of the dashboard. One of the things that you will need to remember that if you choose to place additional 
pivot tables in between certain items, you may receive an error. Often pivot tables need the ability to expand to the right hand side. And if there is something that's blocking it, it will not be able to expand like it needs to. So the best course of action for that is if you choose to copy and paste in additional pivot tables, always remember to do it into a blank area where there is nothing located on the right hand side to restrict the actual growth of the pivot table. 